So today we're gonna to show you how to replace all of the major water regulating components in the back of a typical toilet. And we'll also give you a bunch of pro level information you might not have known about these parts. To do this, I'm teaming up once again with Brent Clifford of Eco Plumbers in Columbus, Ohio. Brent is a master plumber and trainer and Eco Plumbers is the best plumbing company in the central and Dayton, Ohio areas. We're gonna cover everything from testing for leaks to replacing the flapper, replacing the fill valve, and even installing the water supply line at the back. We won't cover replacing the overflow tube and flush valve because that involves unbuilding the toilet, but we might get to it in future videos. This is a longer video, and I'm gonna let Brent do most of the talking here because he's such a good teacher. With that said, let's get to the video. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna check the toilet to make sure the flapper doesn't leak through to the bowl. Gotcha. So we have dye tablets that you can purchase at any hardware store. We use the Corky brand ones. Um, these tablets are dark blue in color. You just don't wanna handle them if your hand's wet because you'll turn into a Smurf. <laughs> okay. And then what we'll do is we'll drop one in one side of the tank and then one in the other. And what'll happen is these tablets will dissolve over a few minutes and fill that tank with a nice rich blue color. Okay. And then we'll give it another five minutes or so. And what will happen is, is if we check the bowl and there's blue in the bowl yep. without it have being flushed, we know that the flapper or something's wrong with the flush seal. Okay. We always check the flapper first. Um, key indicators that the flapper's getting worn is the color discoloration of it. Gotcha. So the plastics themselves should be a really dark, deep red. Okay. This one seems to be washed out and kind of yeah. uh, on the lighter side of things. Yeah. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and replace her flapper for her today. Okay. Um, fill valve. And that's just running fresh water. Yep, that's just running fresh water. This is the overflow. That actually maintains the level in the bowl through the flush. Okay. Um, and then you have your main fill, which actually occurs through the bottom of the uh, fill valve itself. Okay, okay. So the fill valve, the bottom of the fill valve fills the tank, mm -hmm. and then the overflow is filling the bowl. Correct. So okay. it's actually maintaining the water level in the bowl. Gotcha. And as you can see, I just manipulate this, and there's already blue in the yeah, bowl. Yeah, there's a spot of blue. So that tells me that the flapper is worn and is seeping through it at some gotcha. degree. I'm thinking the wine that she's experiences is coming from her fill valve. Yeah. Um, there's a diaphragm and a pin inside of here. And okay. as water passes through that, if it's not opening fully, yep. it will run past it and make like a vibration and whistle noise. Okay. And when we replace our fill valves, typically what we'll do is we'll replace the supply line along with it. Okay. Uh, because the rubber seals on these, when you mess with them, um, this particular one, brand new. So yeah. this is how you'll see it. They'll have a little little cover sticker over the yeah. over the mechanism, and you'll have a rubber seal here gotcha. that awesome. that marries to the fill valve itself from the underside of the okay. toilet. Then you'll have one over here which marries to the actual emergency shutoff on the left hand side of the toilet. Oh, gotcha. And then when you mess with those or take them off, you've compromised that seal. Okay. So you, the best practice would be to replace that that's that hose every time you have to do any kind of work in the back of your toilet where you're Anytime. separating this connection all right typically what will you do uh to replace the flapper or any components in the toilet yep. first is to make sure that the water is shut off turn right like, to shut it off yep clockwise to shut it off counterclockwise to turn it on okay and what we're doing is we're just isolating this using this emergency shut off okay so what we would then do is Drain the tank with a flush, with the good flush, and hold the handle down. Hold the handle down. And then what we'll do is we'll select our proper flapper for this system. Right. In this segment, Brent's explaining that we're replacing the flapper with a Corky Universal 2-inch flapper. Joan Stevens also makes a Universal 2-inch, which we probably could have used here. But Sterling toilets like this one used to use a float style flapper, which relies on the float to keep it aloft while the water is draining down the flush valve. But we didn't have one for this model, so we went with the universal. And this topic is really interesting because these universal flappers often have to be adjusted to function right. So watch closely how this works. So the flapper itself actually has a chamber of air in it. Okay. So that little chamber of air has a little selecting dial. So you can open this hole 
larger or smaller uh, to meter out how much air is released to allow this to come back down. So if you feel like it's clapping shut too fast, you can come down here and sh make that hole smaller. All right, and it's on the underside of the flapper. So it sits down in the uh, little evacuation yep, pipe. Yep, so there. when it lifts up, yep. the air will, will escape out. Yep. And when it does, then it would then get heavy enough to come back down on its own. Okay, so it's uh... And then on the back of this, we'll actually have the different toilets, Barracuda Standard, Aquasaurus, Crane, Gerber, Glacier Bay, Kohler, Season, Sterling, right here. Okay. So that it'll have the number yep. of what that hole should be set at <laughs> to meter that water to have a correct flush. All right, and if it doesn't have a correct flush, then it's just not gonna clear, it's might not clear waste appropriately correct okay it'll stop too soon yep. or... so what we'll do is this one's actually and we'll do this by a system of trial and error because i don't know the specific sterling model this is okay and they have a wide range of hole sizes that it's calling for three okay. two and six gotcha so we'll start at six and then go down to three and then two to find out where the best flush is for this toilet. okay perfect okay so it's like the smallest pinhole mm -hmm. in the thing Gotcha. And that's going to make it float longer? Yes. Okay. That's going to make it float longer. And then if we were at three, it's about the medium size hole. Okay. And then two, which is the other size that it recommends, is slightly larger than that. Okay. So any of these could be for a sterling. Yes. Yeah. So, so six, three, and two. So we'll put that there. And while we're doing this, um, when we're replacing the flapper, yep. now's a good time to replace your fill valve as well. Okay. So we'll go ahead and get that out of here. And I'm going to borrow a trash can to do this. Yeah flap her out you this one has its little ears off yep so pop those little hard tabs and another thing to kind of give you an idea of how much that you need to pay attention to the uh, the set in the water level on your new flapper is, is if it has a universal flapper already in it so right. this has nine steps in it and yeah. then what will happen is is when you when you're setting this this thing actually rotates yeah. moves the hole <laughs> okay so the right. hole gets moved away from the top which it would uh, exacerbate the rate of the air coming out. Okay. So the further away from the top it is, the less air comes out. So we'll take that off the, remove the chain from your handle. So this guy's done. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove the supply line to the toilet. All right. So we got it go ahead and loosened up. You just did that with vice grips? Yeah, we'll just channel locks. Channel locks. Um, just loosened it up so that way I can get it by hand. Yep. You'll get a little little water escapage, so that's why you should always have some rags on hand, which we don't. Yay. Um, crescent wrench to remove from the shutoff the old supply line. You just grabbing a nut on that thing. Yep. All right, so, and as you can see here, this rubber right there is all worn out, starting to get soft and spongy. And then on the other side here, it's almost non-existent. Gotcha. So it just corroded out. Yep. So it'll corrode out. Uh, these inside of these, this is a braided hose. This is a nylon braid. Yep. Inside of that hose is also a rubber hose. The nylon braid is to keep the rubber hose from bursting. Okay. So as it inflates or expands, this does like a almost like a Chinese finger trap principle. All right. The more pressure that's applied to it, the tighter, the tighter it gets. It gets. Huh. Okay. Uh, so that way it doesn't uh, burst out that rubber prematurely. Gotcha. The one that I have with me today, which is this guy, this is actually a braided stainless steel hose. Okay. Same principles apply. It has a rubber hose inside with pressed in hydraulic connections, rubber seals on the ferrules on yep. either end. So this is a ball cock uh, supply line because of the sizing on either end, 3 8 by 7 8 BC, which is the measurement for a toilet fill valve. Okay. Uh, uh, new toilet fill valve that we brought with us today is the Fluidmaster 400A Universal. Um, this works in most standard toilets in homes. There are some elaborate toilets out there that these will not go with, um, that are proprietary. But in the box with the, with the fill valve, this is what you'll get. This will actually have a troubleshooting guide that comes with it. Um, typically when a professional replaces these in a customer's home, what they'll do is they'll leave this guide behind sitting on the toilet somewhere so that the customer has it to consult later if there's okay. ever an issue. Cool. Here's an interesting product mention. We don't have to drain this toilet fully because we're not replacing it. But if you were replacing it, you could use this stuff to make that task much easier. Let me just sprinkle this into the water. 
And then what will happen is, is that will start to absorb that water like Orbeez. So then when we lift this lid again, that's gonna be a nice solid gel surface. And then you can just lift the toilet away without having a bunch of spill out? Yep, no water will spill out. But it's you, flushable. Absolutely. Whoa. Nifty product. Back to the fill valve itself. Yep. So in this package, you'll have two items in this package. So this right here would be for your overflow tubes. This would mount into your overflow tube. Okay. That's what this it channels is, the water into it. Yep. And then this right here is your feed tube. Gotcha. So you would attach that there. Yep. So you have your overflow and this would create an air gap to your overflow. So if your toilet ever got into a situation or scenario where your fill valve was just constantly filling, yeah. you're not, you're, it's another added layer of protection that if you have bleach tablets in your toilet or anything like that, yep. that they're not going to siphon back up and into your water supply. Uh, okay. All right. Gotcha. So we'll replace this as well when we replace that. So everything is new in the toilet. All right. So, and then now what we're going to do, and this is the, the messiest part of this. So All right. Uh, what we'll do is we'll break the nut on the underside with this little trash can underneath it to collect as much water as we can. Then what I'll do is I'll actually apply pressure from the top side here okay. as I take this nut off. So that way when, I, when I'm when i ready for it, I can then bring the water. Okay. I'm going to start breaking the seal. Okay. And bring that out in a controlled manner so that way I'm not making a huge mess everywhere. Okay. So then I'll take this guy off, slide this off, place that to the side, and there's all of the removable components of the toilet removed. Gotcha. And then what I'll do is I will take a look at the, the water level that this was set at, yep. and I'll try to match it the best I can before I install it, Okay. so that way I just need minimal adjustments. Gotcha. That thing telescopes out. Mm -hmm. Pops out like so. This thing is good, for, like I said, for a wide variety of different toilet brands because it can extend up to that far for a really tall for a really tall, tall tank okay. or a high water level toilet. Yeah, and then this one right here, it can shrink down pretty low for a low profile as well, which is kind of what we got here, it seems right. right? So, like, so we have a little, low, little bit of a lower profile uh, flushing mechanism in this toilet, and then I'll lock the ring down so that way water pressure won't eject this off of this because this lock ring. Okay, it's a little plastic. Right here, this little yeah. plastic ring. Yeah. So if I were to do that, that this we could just install this separate from this. Okay. If we wanted to. Okay, but the lock ring is gonna hold the two together. Correct. Gotcha. So the lock ring, so it would lock that in. Yep. And it won't go anywhere. Right. So now what we'll do is we'll figure out our orientation. So where we where would this thing would best fit in there? So we set that in there, kind of see uh where this this port here is. So the port right here, that's gonna feed to your overflow with yep. this tube. Yep. So we want that to be somewhere where we can get to it, um, but not in the way of your your trip lever okay. or any other mechanism in the toilet. So gotcha. right here is about a good spot for us. Yep. So what I'll do is then I'll tighten this nut to the underside. Yep. So we'll get this out of the way here. And these don't have to be like super duper He-Man tight, okay. but they do have to be snug. To get because the, the tighter you make it, it could obstruct against the side of the tank itself, depending on the manufacturer okay. um, or orientation of the, of the device. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually try to hold it here and cinch it down. So you're pressing down on yeah. top of the... So I'm gonna turn it a little bit, see if we can't. There we go. So we want it to be where, because sometimes this head will rest against the that, and then oh, this okay. will be free to move. Okay. So that's what we want. We want this to stay free to yeah. move. Yeah. So it, it has a little clearance from the side. Correct. Gotcha. There we go. So we're good and tight on there. Then what we'll do is we'll place this in. So when we do this, we'll just spread that out, line it up, slide it down. It's got some, it's got some grip. Okay. Cool. And then what we'll do is I will take this, kind of give myself a rough measurement, yep. and trim this to fit. Okay. Well, then we can check this right here to the right. Okay. And you basically just push that on. Yep, just push it on and it'll stay on there. Nice. Just make sure you get it up on there all the way. There okay. we go. Seat it all the way down. So then when we orient this, so everything's free and clear. Yep. It's not gonna get in the way. Everything's connected there. We'll get, our, we'll get our trash out of there. 
And then now the next step would be, now that we've got the fill valve in, we will now attach our new supply line. Okay. Reverse operation as before. So I like to start with the toilet tank. Yep. And it doesn't have to be like wrist breaker tight either. It okay. can be, you know, fairly hand tight, but, and then because we have a really long supply line here and yeah. it's pretty short distance, yeah. um, we'll go ahead and just roll this over. Okay. Typically I'll try to figure out a way to make it as aesthetic as possible gotcha. or hidden. So I'll roll it towards the inside of the toilet, get it started. And then I'll snug this one up with my crescent wrench. So that way I'm not marring the finish. So that way if we're putting in a new shut off as well, everything will stay nice and pretty. There we go. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and now turn on some water just to make sure everything's got flow. Looks like we're in pretty good shape there. Rinse it out a little bit. And then we'll shut her back off until we can replace our flapper. Okay. There's a couple of hurdles to overcome with uh, working with a flapper, and that is your chain length. Okay. Chain length is essential. If it's too long, the flapper won't come up high enough to uh, actually start the flush. Yeah. If it's too short, it, your toilet will constantly run. Okay. Um, so we have to figure out how long this chain needs to be for this toilet. So what we'll do is we'll actually install the flapper to the flush valve. Just hook it on. Yep, just the... hook it on these little rabbit ears here. Yeah. So right there, so we've got it hooked up. Yep. And then what I'll do is I will take the resting position of the flush valve with my hook, and I'll hang my hook off of my flush trip lever, let it hang. I'll set this chain and what I'll do is I'll pull it taut before the flapper starts to rise. Okay. And then from there, I will see where that meets up with that. And I'll go one chain link, two chain links, but typically one chain link lower. One so chain. I'll give it one chain link of slack. So right here is where we're going to need to be. Okay. One chain link of slack. And then I'll hook that up. Okay. And if there's a large amount of excess, you can just take the end of it. Put it back through there as well to get to keep it kind of kind of pulled up so that way because i've seen in my travels where people have changed out their flappers and they have a large amount of excess chain that just hangs into the bottom of the bowl so when they yeah. flush the chain gets caught up underneath in the, the flapper. flapper so you want that to stay away from that flapper uh, okay so we've got that all bundled up nice so what we'll do is we'll then hook up this flapper the to the there. hole at the end where it was before to the, yeah. there you go so now we're hooked in we'll let it rest then I'm going to put on the water all together. Okay. And then allow it to completely fill. Yeah. Now the filling of the toilet, the head pressure that the water creates as it rises is going to apply pressure downward on that flapper to create that seal. Okay. Um, so at first you may experience a little bit of running into the bowl, yeah. which is normal. Um, and typically what I'll do is once this toilet fills up and the fill valve stops and shuts off, yep. I'll assess where my water line is, uh, where it fills up to. Yep. Usually you want this to be about a half inch to seven eighths from the top of this, this line here. Okay. So right here, I have actually designated fill line from the manufacturer that we're just a little bit short of. So we'll just need to add some water uh, to it. So what we'll do is we'll adjust this. And because I've got it adjusted to its highest level, yeah. I'll have to actually shut the water off and lift this up with that lock ring. Okay, so you got to so, raise yeah. up though. Yeah, the whole mechanism. All right. Just maybe an, maybe half an inch. Gotcha. So what I'll do is I'll turn this off because we can't reach right. our desired fill line yeah. the way it is. So then I'll reach my hand down in here, pop that up. And then what I'll do is uh, right there. Slack. Yep, that's going to give us a little bit more rise out of the water level. Because gotcha. from this point, we can always lower it with okay. this screw knob. Gotcha. And there we are. We're at the water level line now. And then what I'll do is I'll give it a flush. Check its flush. Okay. 
So this will fill up, and what I will do is I'll check this flush several times over. Okay. Uh, just to make sure that I'm getting a consistent flush every single time after a repair like this. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, because the first time or the second time may be a one-off, and then the third time you may experience an issue. Oh, really? Okay. Um, and that may be the flapper may hang up, move around, or shift a little. Yeah. Um, things like that. And, and that's not something that we want, because if it shifts too far one way or the other it could like break the seal oh, okay and we don't want that so right here is going to be flush number two okay. and as this fill valve settles in as well the water level may rise or fall okay uh with its operation so there we go so we've got our second flush in there and you can see it's sitting almost a little off to the off left. to the side but yeah. that that flange on the inside that's got a good solid inch okay. to right. seat on Gotcha. So, and you want the water to hit the fill line? That's the main target here? Yeah, that's the main target here is to hit that fill line. And as you can see, we were at the fill line before. Now we're slightly above it. Okay. Because the thing settled in a little bit. Yeah. So we can go ahead and bring this water level down a smidge. All right. Just a few clicks of that guy. And then so we you don't want to go overkill. Yeah, you don't want to go overkill. And it usually will take between, you know, three to six flushes to dial all this in. Okay. I'll mention here that we messed with the aperture on the flapper to see if we could make it not function well. But this one got a full flush at pretty much all settings. Brent believed this was because the overflow tube is fairly short and the flapper gets all the way out of the water when lifted. This means we get a really quick water evacuation, which initiates the siphon in the bowl below no matter what. So this one was just forgiving, but others may have to be dialed in very accurately. All right, and we'll go ahead and what we'll do is we'll throw another set of die tabs in here and come back later and check to make sure that our new flapper is actually sealing and uh, not going to cause any future uh, woes for our customer. Awesome. So that's how you replace the major water regulation components in the back of the toilet tank. The only thing we didn't cover is the trip lever, but that's easily replaced by just loosening the nut on the inner wall of the handle. The only thing you have to remember is that it's reverse threaded. So it's righty loosen, lefty tidy. It's backwards. Otherwise, just match it with one of a similar length and configuration. I really want to thank Brent and Eco Plumbers for helping me make this video. As I said, they're the best plumbing company in the Central and Dayton, Ohio areas, and their Eco Plumbers University is training new plumbers year round with master plumbers like Brent. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back soon for more videos coming up, and please consider subscribing and hitting that bell button to turn on notifications. That way, you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with The Honest Carpenter. I'll see you next time.